and welcome to today's edition of A Minnesota. The remainder of the week, we are going to be on the road in Zambroda for the Goodyear County Fair. Man, are we looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Always is when we go to the Goodyear County Fair in Zambroda. That's the remainder of the week. Courtesy of the Security State Bank of Kenyon, we're bringing you our A Minnesota show every day this week. The Security State Bank of Kenyon, where they say personal service it's our style. The following week, next week, it's the Steel County Fair, and then on the weekend, Rose Fest over in Kenyon. You get a terrific car show, and I don't say that just because I announced at the car show. It is a terrific car show. They got an awesome show. Most people that attend agree. They've had over a hundred vehicles there in past years, and we're hoping a lot of folks will come over to Kenyon next weekend for their Rose Fest car show. Today we're going to talk about an event that's going to happen on the same day, Saturday, August 22nd, at the Central Park Band Show from 10 until 4. It is the 10th Annual International Festival Faribault, and Peter Von Sloot is on the organizing committee. You have a title, Peter? Well, technically I'm the president, but we have a group of people, about eight, nine people, and we're all working together. You're the president? Well, we had to come up with a title somewhere. Well, we have a president, we have a treasurer, et cetera. Et I didn't cetera. realize I had the president with me here today. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> this is the 10th annual. Have you been involved every year, Peter? This is my fifth year, actually, yes. So what, what happened was originally the festival was uh, organized by the uh, Diversity Coalition and the Welcome Center, which was Milo. Right. Larson, uh, Bob Kell, uh, a couple other people, and then five years ago, six years ago, they uh, basically ran out of funding and out of time, and it closed, and then uh, a an, uh, retired pastor from the neighborhood, Dan Zilski, came on the newspaper, he said, do you think we can revive this? We have six weeks to do this, and uh, a group of us stepped up, and we did it, and it was crazy that first year, the, that was the sixth annual uh, festival, but we have organized, we have... Uh, become an official 501c uh, nonprofit, and uh, so this is our fifth time with this particular group and it's getting easier every year. Still a lot of work involved. Oh yeah, it's awesome. I went a year ago and we were chatting before going on the air. Of course everybody that knows me knows I like to eat, or you can look at me and know I like to eat, but they've got incredible food from all over the world, literally, at this event. Absolutely, and one of the things that I always tell people and this, uh, this whole festival is here to help understand different cultures in our town, etc. So one of the things is you see somebody on the street, you say, ah, oh, there's a Mexican. Okay, Th that could be from Mexico, from yeah. Guatemala, El Salvador, uh, Honduras. And do you know that tamales are different in every country? You know, uh, you can go to, to the festival and go to these different places and eat the same, what you think the same thing, but every country makes them a little bit different. Right. And that's what the old understanding is all about. It is just so much fun. Very colorful, too, the costumes that some of the dancers wear on the stage. Absolutely. And this year, we actually have a couple of more uh, dancers on stage than last year. Because every year, as I said, we're growing every year. So the addition this year, so as you know, we have uh, Olin Aya Kaxley, which are the Aztec dancers. They're the ones with the feathers. They're kind of the professional group out of everyone. But we always have people from uh, from Guatemala, from Mexico, singing and dancing on stage. But this year, we're adding South Sudanese dancers and Cambodian dancers. And I've seen the Cambodian dancers, and they're, it's quite a, quite a good performance. So then will we have Cambodian food, too? Yes, we have Cambodian food, too. And that is also quite amazing. Yes. I wish I could be there. 10 until 4 are the hours, by the way. 10 until 4 on Saturday, August 22nd at the Central Park Man Show. I'll be announcing the car show during that time over in Kenya. That's the season opener for high school football games, too. Okay. I did in the area. Yeah. But as I noted on our website when I plugged today's show, I said you can go to this and still get to your football game. Absolutely, yes. You can spend the day here and then come in later in the afternoon and go to the football games. So. So. You can't use that as an excuse, folks, and I would highly recommend you attend. If you enjoy eating at all, you'll enjoy this. And if you enjoy entertainment, they got a great silent auction. I know I got a couple of items last year on the silent auction that I purchased, some very unique items. We'll talk about that when AM Minnesota can as well to see the International Festival. 
which is on Saturday, August 22nd, from 10 until 4 at the Central Park Band Shell. I mean, you don't have to spend the entire day there, but you're welcome, right, Peter? Absolutely, yeah. So we have, uh, you know, performances that will start at 10 o'clock in the morning, and they will go on until uh, 4 o'clock. So one of the, a couple of highlights we have. Um, around 1 o'clock, we are going to do our uh, flag ceremony. So this year, we'll have uh, 20 countries. Uh, people will take their flags and go up on stage. And then one by one, they will present their country, their flag, uh, maybe do a pledge to their flag. There's actually not that many countries that pledge their flag. Uh, United States, of course, there's a couple others, but most countries, you know, they have an anthem. So some people will sing, I will sing. So that, that's a show in itself. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> because I, I never sing except once a year on stage and I sing the first two verses of the Dutch national anthem. And um, so every, every flag is represented by somebody from that particular culture or country. And it is, that is actually a very, very nice, um, uh, you know, presentation there. Do you know, Peter, I, I don't know if you know or not, because it changes constantly, how many countries there are now in the world? I could not tell you by heart, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it, well, it does fine, change. 20 countries is a heck of a turnout. Yeah, yes, and these are all countries that are represented in Faribault, and there are actually a few more countries uh, in Faribault, but we have not really found the sure. people. We've heard of different other countries, but we, we what we really like is somebody uh, from that country or who has lived in that country to be on stage with that flag as much as we can. Um, so th we actually we start uh, the program with uh, Steve Huber. He is a uh, he plays acoustic guitar. Uh, he's been playing around here in the uh, in town in the different uh, venues, and he's he's pretty well known. He has a nice following, and we're going to end the performance uh, schedule with Adrian Lee, our own uh, hula hoop lady here in town. And she uh, she is also fairly well known. She's incredible. I can't believe how long she can hula. Absolutely, yeah. So she <laughs> she starts at three o'clock, and uh, she, we we love having her at the festival because she is even though she may not be international, she represents the American culture. But she uh, you know she has her own um, uh, going around in circles uh, presentation, her tent where she sells hoops, and she also teaches kids during the day all for free. And then uh, she'll be on stage. And at 3.30, we do another great thing. It's, it's the um, uh, piñatas. And that is just <clears throat> a very, how should I say, moving performance. Because you see all these kids from all these different cultures, not caring that they're from different cultures. And they're all there trying to do that uh, piñata. Yeah, they're and taking a whack at the piñata to get the candy to come out. <laughs> Absolutely, yep. And we have a lady from El Salvador, Rosie Tobar, who is in our committee. She organizes that. And so we get uh, that donated. We get the uh, piñatas donated. We get the, uh, the candies for the piñatas donated. I believe we have at least two piñatas because there's a lot of kids out there. I believe that's how many we had a year ago. Yes. Or you had a year yep. ago, I should say. <laughs> and um, also the uh, piñatas is going to be right next to the bouncy castle. And the bouncy castle, which is donated by uh, Faribault Rental, that is also a huge hit. Uh, it's full with kids all day long. Well, not full full with kids because bouncy castles, you have to be careful not to put too many kids in, to, you know, make sure that they don't bounce too crazy. But all day long, uh, there will be lines at the bouncy castle. And it's all free. That's another thing. The whole festival is free. Now, if you want to buy some food, right, right. that costs some money. Uh, but most of it is because most of the people there, or actually everybody, they're pop and mom places. We really don't want any... Uh, commercial food vendors there because we want um, the local people here uh, to be able to come and sh showcase their foods. And I will tell you again from personal experience the food is phenomenal. Absolutely yes and I, I run around so much because there's a lot of things to do. Our sure. the committee you know we have a lot of things to do during the day as well um, but I, I do sample a couple of things here and there and it is, it is truly uh, remarkable. Unfortunately, because I'm so busy, um, the, the first year I also had Dutch food there and uh, it was too much um, bandwidth for me. So unfortunately, I don't do Dutch food and, uh, you know, but you know, that's another plug here. We still have uh, table spots available right now. If uh, somebody wants to uh, come and get a table, so tables are um, uh, $15 uh, for a table. But tomorrow it goes up to twenty-five dollars. 
Oh my. But but I'm going to make an executive decision here as the president that um, if you mention that you heard us on the radio, <coughs> we'll honor the fifteen dollars. Well, still. how cool is that? Yeah. Just say you heard it on KDHL, you get the table for fifteen bucks. Now, I am of German heritage. Yes. So I could set up a German table, or do I have to be directly from Germany to do that? Uh, no, you, if you're from Heritage, you can do that, yes. And so you're going to be there after all, uh, Cordy? So I could have some German beer there. there beer? No, we do not allow alcohol in oh, the park. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, because of the crazy liability laws, uh, I, I don't think we're even allowed to serve uh, alcohol in the park. No, I but we are, we are not doing that. So, so if you do serve food, uh, there are actually when you sign up with a table reservation form there's a little bit uh, it says food and health service rules so basically on the form you sign for some uh, some rules that you're using gloves and that you keep the hot food hot and the cold food cold and that you have cleaning supplies etc etc I probably and could do a hamburger where they put you know they put an egg on the hamburger yes you can do that and yeah and you can do brats and things like that but you know there you can also uh, every country has their own drinks and it doesn't have to be alcoholic drinks either and if you don't want to serve drinks you can just serve food and not drinks there's people that serve water with their with their food sure but there is also uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, international drinks uh, horchata which is the uh, what is it the rice drink from mexico and you know th with the molasses and the rice etc i've never yeah. been to mexico You've never been? Well, then come to the International Festival and you can experience it. Have you been there? I've been in Mexico, yes. And it was quite amazing there, too. I, when I was in Mexico, um, what we think are tacos are quite different there. Yes. And, and here we do not put shredded grasshoppers or ant eggs on our tacos. So, And it is the same with pizza. If you go to, to Italy, the pizzas are different. So. I know. I was there in April. Yes, you were. Everybody yeah. told me when I was going to leave, the pizzas are nothing like the pizzas here. Yep. So, and, and that's the thing, and the same thing with Chinese food here. Um, you know, if you go to China, it is a little bit different there The as pasta well. was pretty much the same in yes, Italy. Yes, yes. Tasted better, however. It did there? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, anyway, the, so you can start a food table, and um, if you, or any table, if you do want to do arts and crafts, if you do want to do... Uh, uh, so we, we have actually already a couple of people, like we have a face painter, we are going to have a henna, hand painter, uh, if we had one year we had caricature painting, um, you know, so it doesn't necessarily have to be food, food would be great, but uh, if you have something with arts and crafts, now if you sell, for instance, soaps or, or clothing or whatever, even if it's not internationally themed, you can still come. Uh, you know, we have uh, people that sell regular arts, etc., etc. I've got to ask you, Peter, before I forget this while it's still in my head. When you had the food, did you serve chocolate? I mean, that's what the Dutch are known for, right? Actually, no. What what we served was um, a couple of things. We have in Holland, we have a thing. It's very hard to describe, but it's like a they're like meat sticks and meatballs made out of a thick goulash and they're deep fried and they're called croquettes. Sounds delicious. And uh, we also what we do is we have. For that's is typical breakfast. We have biscuits. They're very hard, round biscuits, fairly thick, and we sprinkle. Well, we sprinkle chocolate on there. Sp chocolate sprinkles. Why there we go. Surprise me. Yes, and um, so it's either chocolate sprinkles or sugar sprinkles, and uh, it's a tradition in Holland. If you have a baby, then instead of passing out cigars to everybody, you go to your work and you pass out these biscuits with colored sugar sprinkles on it whether they're blue or or pink, depending on a boy or girl. Interesting. Yes, yes. So as I said, we did serve those. They're, they're actually called rusks, and it is amazing. hy V sells these biscuits, they're called rusks. And I I always had to go to the cities to get them until I found out that hy V sells, sells them. Now the Dutch sprinkles, I still have to get imported from Holland, or Michigan. There's some Dutch food vendors there. but. Um, and and also when I was uh, having that boot five years ago, I was wearing my Dutch uh, wooden shoes. <coughs> As you know, the Dutch wear wooden shoes. Sure, yeah. And Maybe. we still do. And and we make jokes about that. But I actually have three pairs of wooden shoes by my back door, and I use them in my backyard. Now I'm going to work, you know, wearing them. That would no, be difficult. I do. Yeah, I do not. Yes, you can drive with me there. Um, but talking about that, uh, the dressing up, uh, or, or uh, you don't want to call
call them costumes, but you call them, you know, folklore, or, you know, the, the way people dress. Uh, the people that are going to be on stage, uh, a lot of them are going to be dressed up. We have uh, uh, people from, uh, uh, from Guatemala, we have people from El Salvador, we have from Mexico, the Aztec dancers, of course, and, and they are uh, they're a highlight of the, of the show. Uh, you know, because they're semi-professional and they do a really, really great performance. That's going to be at noon time. Are they the dancers I saw last year? Yes. Yeah, yes. they were very good. Yeah, last year, um, unfortunately, we had a little bit of rain, and uh, they had they were performing on stage. But normally, they actually perform through the crowds. They go around the, oh, the benches okay. and uh, they're on the on the on the grass itself. And as I said, we also have South Sudanese uh, music and dancers, and then the Cambodian dancers, and that is. Uh, the Cambodian dancers, they have started a dance group because we are closely affiliated with the Faribault Diversity Coalition. As I mentioned earlier, when the Diversity Coalition closed, we continued the international festival separately. But meanwhile, the Diversity Coalition has been revived and is doing fairly well and a lot of activities there. And um, we have brought in other cultures as well into the Diversity Coalition. And one of them is the Cambodian groups. And every Sunday morning at the Diversity Coalition office or building, uh, the Cambodian dancers, they uh, practice there for a couple of hours. And I've seen their performances. They're quite amazing. I need to take another break here. And then when we come back, we're going to visit some more with Peter Van Sloot. He is the... He is the uh, president of the International Festival Faribault Committee. Tenth annual event is coming up. Twenty different countries are going to be represented. On the I mentioned stage. earlier, you can attend both the Rose Festival. Well, you can attend all three of the events, the Steel County Fairs that week, the Rose Festival in Kenyon, and this event going on in Central Park. And take a little snippet of each one of them and have yourself a terrific weekend. Peter Von Sluis is with us. He, again, is the president of the International Festival Faribault, having their 10th annual event on August 22nd. Flag raising is at 1 in the afternoon, but the event starts at 10 in the morning. And you do that because more people are there at 1? Is that why you decide to... Uh, that is correct. Not everybody is going to be there from 10 sure. in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. So uh, 1 o'clock is kind of uh, a little bit where it's a, one of the busiest times during the day. And because this is... Uh, you know, of course, the music is nice and the dancing is nice, but we think that the uh, the flag ceremony on stage is just a very solemn, um, important type of uh, ceremony, and it will probably last about 45 minutes with with all these uh, uh, with all these different countries on stage. Now I know some countries they have uh, 75 verses in the national anthem. No one can sing them all. 75 yeah. verses. But uh, we're we're just trying to keep. Uh, every country only to a couple of minutes because otherwise we'll be on stage forever. <laughs> but it is it is very nice. Uh, this year we, we had actually some very good feedback um, from last year. Last year we had everybody lined up on the stage and we passed the microphone and apparently the people in the back of the field could not really see who was holding the microphone. So it was a little bit unclear what you, which flag or which country was represented. Sure. So this year we're going to do it differently. We're going to all stand a little bit more back at the stage and then the country presenting will step forward with their flag. So it is a little bit more clear. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Now the flags that you had draped across the Central Park bench last year, did they represent each of the countries that was in the park or just a... Yeah, th there's there's a, a smaller flag, so what one by two feet or so. Right. They're hanging across the band shell. That is uh, just a general banner that we purchased. That is not specifically representative, but I uh, I have not really double checked it, but I would believe that most of the countries, if not all, are represented there. <coughs> In twenty different countries are represented. Your committee is comprised of. Uh, of different, different countries too. Right? right, yeah. So as I said, I'm originally from Holland. I actually came here 28 years ago. Uh, but we have people from uh, from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and um, one person who actually lived in Japan for a number of years. So we, we kind of count that as well. And then we have a few Somali leaders on the committee as well. Yes. So talking about Somali leaders, we, um, uh, as usual, the mosque will have a, an information booth where they will serve some busas. And I'm not sure if you had some busas last year. Oh, yeah. And they are quite good as well. Some busas are like little 
triangular pastries filled with something, and you never know what. Well, you know what it's faced, what it's filled with, but it could be something with curry, it could be with vegetables, could be with potatoes, could be with different meats. So th there's different samosas from different regions. Okay, because they had some of that at the community center during night to night earlier this week. That is correct. That's uh, I was unfortunately not able to attend, but I did hear that the Somali community donated. Uh, I believe they said 500 sambusas, and they also had a, a henna hand painter uh, that was at the community center. And uh, we uh, we plan to have her as well at the festival. That would be nice. I have to tell you, Peter, it was really neat to see the turnout of Somalian people that were in the community center parking lot enjoying themselves along with the, the rest of us. That was awesome. Right, and I actually noticed that also um, at, the, at the Blue Collar Barbecue Fest. Uh, this year a lot more Somalis turned up, and, and that is what it's all about. It's just not about hiding in your own community, your own culture. This is all about um, uh, understanding, because uh, if you do not understand, it leads to fear. If you fear something, it leads to hatred. And that is really the whole basic why we do this. We we all want to understand from each other. It doesn't mean that you may like it or that it's not your culture, but it's all <coughs> about you know understanding each other. And and you go, oh, I did not know that. Oh, I did not know your your food. And and I've I've had some people uh, that that were not so much into different cultures and they tasted some food and they came to me and said, can I get the recipe? Because <laughs> this was good. <laughs> I want to mention actually a couple more things. The the Riverbend Nature Center is also going to have a booth there, and they're going to be presenting uh, animals to kids. So you know, as I said, we have uh, not everything is food booths. There's also arts and crafts, but then there's also uh, informational booths. So you know, things like uh, uh, the American Association of University Women. There's the Health Finders. Uh, there's you know things like that. Diversity Coalition ha will have a booth. So there's a lot of non-profit booths. That uh, that just present their case as well. So uh, non-profit tables are actually free. If so, if there's somebody still wants to sign up on that, uh, they can get a, a space for free. So th when we talk about the 15 or the 25 dollars for a table or for a spot, you know we're not making a profit on this. It's a little bit to cover some of our expenses. So for instance, we're renting a big tent. You know when we have you know we have postage, we have other expenses. Everybody of course works for free. Uh, and then we have the silent auction that makes some money as well. And then what we'll do is we'll keep a little base amount for the for the event for next year for expenses, and the rest goes all back to charity, local charity, whether it is um, the Hope Center or whether it is uh, you know it it could be something like that, or it can go directly to a family that needs shoes or or a bed or. Um, and that is uh, kind of at the, the discretion of the committee. We get these requests in and we say, okay, let's see um, you know, who, who really needs it. Of course, there's a lot more need than money, so we, we pick something. And then we hold back a little bit for, um, for Christmas, because around Christmas time there will be people that would be needing something as well. Arts and crafts, I think we touched on that. Of course, I've been privileged enough to do some world travel. And it's one of the common denominators when you go to other places in the world, Peter, you know, the music and the art you'll that find in every country all over the world. And that, that is what, what brings us together, yes. We, before we run out of time, I'd like to just mention, so we have a website, but we also have a Facebook um, page. And the Facebook page actually, uh, that is more interactive, so we, we do a lot more things there. So if you go to Facebook and you look for International Festival Faribault, you will see a lot of things there. There's pictures from last year, there's announcements, and there's discussions from people. And indeed, a lot of people say, yeah, I was there last year, and it was really, really great. So if you go to International Festival Faribault on Facebook, and if you like the page uh, and, and share maybe, that helps also um, to spread the word a little sure. bit. But uh, if you like the page, then you will automatically get notified every time we put something on there. <coughs> Sounds great. And then the other thing, we could always use a little bit more volunteers. You know how it goes. Uh, it is quite an, uh, a big thing to, to set up. Uh, we need people to set up the tables. We need people to uh, set up the tent. We need a little bit of cleanup towards the end. And we've always been able to do that. But the more hands, you know, the lighter the work. Facebook is International Festival Faribault. 
website is internationalfestivalfarable.org. So those are a couple of the ways to find out more about the International Festival. Thanks, Peter, for coming on, especially short notice. Okay, thanks for having me. Coming on today. Peter Von Sluis, we knew we weren't going to be able to get Peter on next week because we're at the Steele County Fair all week. And then, of course, uh, the weekend we'll be over to to the Rose Fest, and we wanted to get the word out about the International Festival here in Faribault. Central Park Band Show, Saturday, August 22nd, from 10 until 4. Hope a lot of people do attend. It was terrific last year. The food was phenomenal. I know I keep emphasizing that, but it really was. Entertainment was great, too. Those Aztec... Aztec dancers are so talented, so talented. The music was awesome. It was just a really neat adventure. And that's kind of how I would term it, a bit of an adventure, learning outside the box. KDHLAM, Farrellville, Minnesota.